These are the required tools for the installation. Building the optional wood form. The Apollo calls for a 20 inch by 20 inch square wood form measured from the inside edges. This is optional but helpful when you're pouring your concrete. Once built, ensure it's square. Next, assemble your concrete anchor. Start by removing the top two hex nuts and two flat washers, then thread the last hex nut all the way down the J-bolt thread. Place each J-bolt into the steel template and thread the standard hex nut all the way down and sandwich the steel plate between the two hex nuts. Once in place, place your two flat washers and locking hex nuts onto the J-bolt so that you do not misplace them. They will be used when mounting the main pole. Repeat this for all four J-bolts. Then tighten and ensure all four J-bolts are facing as shown. Next, using your anchor, measure out how much overhang you would like to have. You can use the diagrams in your user manual to help. And place your optional wood form around your anchor and start digging to mark the location. Be sure that your wood form is as high or higher than the playing surface to ensure that the system can adjust up to 10 foot regulation height. Next, dig your hole according to the installation manual. Be sure to bell the hole out at the bottom on all four sides to make the bottom of the hole larger than the rest. Once complete, ensure the hole is the correct size and depth. Now you can mix your concrete. Reference your installation manual for an estimation of how much concrete you will need. Be sure to mix the concrete to the manufacturer's directions on the bag. Fill your hole about halfway up with concrete and agitate the concrete with a the shovel. Then place your four pieces of rebar as shown. Then continue to fill to the top of the hole. Next, place your optional wood form on and level it. Next, fill to the top of the wood form. Be sure that your concrete is as high or higher than the playing surface to ensure that the system can get to a regulation 10 foot. Then smooth out your concrete with a trowel. Next, we are gonna place the concrete anchor into the concrete. Start by finding the center on each side. Then eyeing the center marks, place your anchor into the concrete, shaking it up and down to agitate the concrete. Then move it left or right as needed. Then level and square the anchor one last time ensuring nothing has moved. Let cure for five to seven days or as long as the concrete manufacturer recommends. Assembly day. Start by placing a two x four down on the ground and placing the bottom section of the main pole on the two x four. Ensure you have each section of pole facing the proper direction because once connected, you cannot disconnect these pole sections. After ensuring the correct orientation, take the upper main pole and push firmly onto the lower main pole. Then pick up as shown and hit the pole on the two x four a few times to bring the poles together. Next, install your two post ears as shown. Leave these loose so that you can attach the actuator in the next step. Next, install the bottom side of the actuator to your pole ears, then tighten all hardware. Place the pole system on two sawhorses or something similar. Then install the safety stop bolt with the plastic spacers. Be sure not to over tighten. Next, install the lower extension arm onto the main post as shown, then tighten. Then install your actuator crank handle and remove the plastic cover on the actuator. Next, expand your actuator to line up the bolt holes with the lower extension arm holes. Once lined up, reinstall the plastic cover and install the hardware. Next, install your two upper extension arms as shown and tighten the hardware. Next, we're gonna mount the main pole to the anchor. Start by removing the optional wood form 
and the top hex nut and one of the two flat washers on each anchor bolt. With four capable adults lift the pull system into place on the anchors while a fifth person installs one flat washer and one locking hex nut onto each J bolt and then tighten. Once the main pull has been secured, we can mount the backboard. With four capable adults, lift the backboard into place while a fifth person installs the hardware for the lower extension arm. Then pivot the backboard up and connect the two upper extension arms securing with the hardware. Then tighten the all hardware. Next, install the backboard padding on each side of the backboard and tighten. Before we go any further, we want to make sure the backboard is level. Place a level on the front face of the backboard and see if leveling is needed. You can also check the backboard on the top edge to see if any adjustment is needed there. To level, loosen two of the anchor hex nuts and then raise and lower the hex nuts below the main pole. Once level, tighten all four hex nuts on the top of the J bolts. Then place your four thread protectors on your J bolts. Next, we're going to mount the rim. Start by installing the four rim spacers in the glass backboard. If the rim spacers are not used, you will risk damaging or breaking your backboard. Using the four rim bolts, mount the rim to the backboard. Tighten the hex nuts hand tight to start with. Then place a level on the backboard as shown and level the rim left to right. Then tighten all four rim bolts while watching the rim to ensure it stays level. Next, using a Phillips screwdriver, install your rim plate. Then attach your protective padding to your main pole. Next, we're going to calibrate the height system. Start by raising the system up to 10 foot. This is measured from the top of the rim to the ground. Then using a pencil, mark the 10 foot mark. Now lower the system down. Be careful not to adjust down too far. Your safety stop will eventually come in contact with your lower extension arm. At this point, do not adjust any lower. Then apply your sticker with the 10 foot mark at your pencil mark. Be sure everyone using the system fully understands the safety warnings. Now it's time to start playing some basketball. 